Well, we are going to get now to our tech corner this week. And this is a really good tech corner. We, we really like doing this because every once in a while we can have a guest here in the studio with us. And we do have that in this case. So we're going to turn out a tech corner, which we're going to have in our Studio B, which is thousands and thousands of centimeters away. So as Dirk traverses that great distance, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're demoing today. It's a brand new Opto Digital Microscope from Olympus America Inc., the DSX500. This tool has some truly unique features and functionalities, and to tell you all about it, I'm now going to throw it back to Dirk, who's joined by Robert Bellinger of Olympus. Take it away, guys. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, yep, as Mike said, I'm here with Rob Bellinger, an applications engineer with Olympus. And Rob, you're here today to show us what this the is, Olympus uh, yeah, what, DSX500, right? This is the new Olympus DSX500, our opto, opto digital microscope. This tool is designed to uh, save you time and money by ease of use to produce images and data that can be used to make decisions. The way that it does this is by Olympus guaranteeing accuracy <coughs> and repeatability of the tool. Um, it can generate that by an auto calibration feature. So the system comes with a standard and we can do auto calibrations with a one touch interface. Now you, you say this guar they guarantee so. accuracy. That's a little unusual for, it for is. this instrument of this type, right? Yeah, most okay. digital microscopes you can take measurements with, you know, when you or you put a digital camera on your normal microscope, you can take measurements, but we don't see guarantees to those measurements. Okay. And customers are, you know, put on the line for knowing if their measurements are accurate. The reason Olympus can guarantee this is we have the auto calibration capability. And we even go a step further by having a built-in gauge R&R, a reproducibility and a repeatability tool in the software that allows the user to have multiple users, multiple samples, and test measurements over that group to get repeatability uh, specs on their samples and the users themselves. Okay. The um, system runs uh, with an intuitive touchscreen operation. This improves a little bit of ergonomics. You're not hunched over the eyepieces like a normal microscope. We have a very high frame rate camera system in here. We have all of our normal um, observation methods with a one button push observation modes. We have our bright field, our dark field. We do have a mix. I'll cover that in a second. Okay. DIC and polarization. So most of your imaging techniques you see on a normal microscope. So what we have on the image here is bright field. We can switch to dark field and you can see that okay. images come around. What's unique about this tool is we have a segmented LED dark field capability. This allows us to turn on different segments to light from different angles on your sample and you can actually rotate those segments around to see lighting, it comes in different and, angles. So, and and that'll, that'll help you choose what, what angle is best for what you're trying to image. Yeah, trying point, to right. image or trying to see a different features okay. or defects on the surface. Right. And we have a new feature, something unique to our tool here is mix. This allows us to not only use dark field lighting, and we still have our segmented LED here, but it allows us to incorporate the bright field observation at the same time. It looks like you can adjust the bright field uh, so a, a, as, you, as you need. Exactly, so you can turn okay. your bright field observation a little brighter or darker to get your background image that okay. dark field usually cuts out, right. but still get all the edge enhancements of dark field. Okay. One uh, observation modes, you know, single push button. The system's meant for ease of use though. So the operator can come up, put their sample on very quickly, and they want to get their best image. The way to do that, with our built-in best image function, they select what they're running, maybe a flat type sample, and the tool will set up uh, a whole okay. bunch of pre-sampled images and switch between observation methods automatically. So it's showing you, it's showing you uh, on this side, this is a preview of what these different uh, observation uh, types would look like, and then you're exactly. just going to simply select the one that you feel is closest to, to what you're trying to do. Exactly, okay. so you have our bright field image, we have DIC images, and we also have some of our observation uh, techniques like DIC with HDR, high dynamic range. Okay. And if you select these, you can go in a, um, a single selection would take you out. If we hit apply, it'll switch the microscope to that technique and go back to your library. And then obviously once you're here, you could kind of fine tune it some more. So you could use the, the, best, uh, the best image to get close, and then once you're on there, make some further adjustments here yeah. on the screen, is that? And, and even simpler than that, during the best image feature, we could have went into more advanced oh, okay. settings, and you could have fine tuned have it in there, there as, well. as okay. well. So you don't have to come out here and mess with a whole bunch of the sliders anymore. Okay. The um, unique thing about our image processing, our built-in image processing features, we have an auto contrasting tool, so single push button, you can gain contrast on the surface of your image. 
We also have the built-in high dynamic range. I mentioned this a little bit. This is a uh, built-in HDR imaging to add contrast and the exposure rates in the dark areas. It brings them a little brighter and the really bright refle high reflective areas dims down. But the downside to HDR, it gets a great image, but if you want to move around the sample quickly, it doesn't have the fastest refresh rate. Olympus designed a new imaging technique for image processing called wider. It's wide dynamic range. This reduces glare and brings up the intensity in the dark areas while still having a very fast refresh rate for the screen movement. And the only downside of this is you don't get quite the uh, the the surface enhancement as as you might get with with, with HDR. HDR. Okay. Yeah. So, you so don't if you can do, if you can live without that, this is going to be a much faster much way faster, to go. Much okay. faster. Works great for samples that have high amount of glare that you okay. want to suppress. Um, we also have a feature called color highlighting here that allows you to select a color range with a dropper tool. Select like this red range here, and when you activate it, it turns everything else black and white or grayscale. Okay. So the, every, the, all the blue colors here went grayscale except for our red image. So as you're scanning around your sample, the red really sticks out if you're looking for that color defect on your surface. Uh, okay. And so that's this, just is, this is kind of another push. way to highlight particular types of features or particular types of defects exactly. based on color. All right. Yeah, and if you're looking for a specific color on your sample and it's random, you can set, focus in on just that color, move around quickly, and it sticks it, it, out. It, well, yes. it pops right out. All right. So. The touch screen, we have a built-in opto-digital zoom feature. Now, this is interesting. This is, uh, I, I noticed you yep. uh, um, pinch to zoom. You can, so basically, kind of if you've got an iPhone or iPad or exactly. that type of thing, this works kind of the same way. So your zoom is really, and you actually, that's a mechanical, I mean, you're actually controlling the optics the, when you do that. The optical zoom built okay. in, yeah. All so right. you're not digitally zooming, you're not losing resolution. We can optically zoom up quite a ways to get very high magnification ranges by using just one objective. We do still use our world-class optics from Olympus. We can use our entire range of UIS-2 optics, and Olympus did specifically design lenses for this microscope as well. Okay. The nice thing about this is your know, touchscreen interface allows you to go where you want. You can move by fields of view, and you can do some more unique things with stitching functions. We have the ability to do stitching with a motorized stage. We can do high quality stitching where you mark two points like a top left corner and a bottom right corner of your entire area you want to stitch. And it will stitch that together with high quality automatically. Okay. And it can even do your through focus at the same time. So we can get a three, d three dimensional image stitched together in a large panoramic. All right. But if you're looking to get a quicker result, you can do a live panorama where we do a simple uh, 2D stitch we activate it here, and with the touch screen interface, we can just simply drag, and this starts stitching it for us together. So this is actually moving the stage and capturing more images, and then stitching those images together as, as it goes. Exactly. It moves okay. the stage to where we want to drag here, and it stitches these images together for us. And when we're done, we can do two unique features. We can save this as a brand new image by just hitting complete here. But if we also select to use it as a map image, when we go back out, so now I hit complete. This will save it as a brand new image. All right. And it's still calibrated. We can do our measurements on this 2D image, point to point measurements. But we can also import that large stitch area and use it as our map image if we wanted to. OK. To do you know s quick stitch of an area and you want to move around quickly, you can drive through your map. Um, if you notice in the map image here, if you zoom in on an area, it shows you where you're zoomed into. So oh, okay, so there's a little green box over in that right-hand side, which box. is the, with the area you're actually looking at on the entire image that you've stitched together. Exactly. Okay. This could either be the large stitched area, or it could be just a low mag oh, image. Got it. Got it. And you can actually move this around to any position you want, and the stage will drive right to that position. Pretty neat. Quick and easy interfaces is what I was going to say. The, the interface <laughs> is very simple on this. I, I really like this. So I like your. Uh, uh, we haven't really touched on it, but you've yeah. got up on top. You've got kind of your three major three things. Major you can do. Things. You can do your imaging, your measurement, yeah. and your reports. And each of those brings up a contextual uh, screen there. Yeah, and okay. let's get to that. Okay. Downside to high resolution compound optics is you get this out of focus information and in focus information. If you want, we can gather all that information into one focus plane by performing an EFI image down here. Now, EFI means what? Extended focal imaging, where okay. we create a one focused image for all the focus planes. Or we can even capture a 3D image. To set a 3D image, really all we have to do is focus down to the bottom. And I'm focusing with the scroll wheel on the mouse. You could also use the focus buttons here 
but you just hit start at the bottom of focus and then you go to your very top of focus this would be the top of these pads here okay and you hit end on that and then you hit acquire and it's using our image processing technique, any of our observation modes, and it automatically captures this all-in-focus image for us. Okay, so it's, it's, it's stepping and then focusing, stepping then focusing, is that what's... It's actually uh, stepping from bottom of focus to top and capturing all the focus slices okay. between there and integrating it into one focused image using an, um, kind of a um, uh, uh, imaging technique okay. to cut out the out-of-focus data. Okay. So when you're all done, you get an all-in-focused yeah, image. Right. And since we selected 3D here, it captured all the height information since it knows very precisely where you're going. Oh, very cool. We can render a three-dimensional image, zoom in and out with our touch screen. And you can rotate it. You can control that image just with your finger on the touch screen. Rotate there. it right. with the finger on the touch screen, or you can use your backup mouse if you'd like. The other thing, you talked about measurements. We can switch to this. We can get live measurements right on a profile. So if you're interested in this peak here down so there's the a cross base, section we're looking at right there. Okay. Cross sectional profile. This allows you to get height information. So we can take and spit our height data right over to a data sheet. And that data sheet can be put out to Excel. All right. You can also do different measurement types like line width, angle measurements, curvatures, cross sectional area. Since we have three dimensions, we can also measure volume and surface area as well. Um, some of the other just basic 2Ds, like your normal microscope, a comp uh, upright compound microscope with a digital camera, we can still go into just geometric measurements and take two-dimensional measurements, something like center of circle to center of circle, marking three points here to three points down here would give you a distance measurement oh, okay. between the center of circles here. All, right. All this information gets exported out. Say we go back to our profile here in our 3D image. We can also show, this is the raw color image, right. but we can show height data and a height image like uh, this. All right. yeah. We can even show wired frame view to see where curvatures happen on your sam sample surface. Right. The nice thing, once you take all of your measurements and gather all your images that you want, simple one button push to create your report. And we will generate a template that can be customized and generate a report here showing your line profile, your actual 3D image. That can be rotated live on the screen here. Okay. And when you're done with this, this gets exported to either Microsoft Word or PDF format. Wow. Simple work process, like you said, imaging, measurements, and reports. Is this a fairly new product, or? This just launched for us a month ago. Um, and what, what, very what, new and cutting edge. What markets uh, is this going into predominantly? This is going to be in a pretty large range of industrial type markets. It could be from medical devices to uh, circuitries uh, to your, um, s you know, even semiconductor applications okay. because we have a broad range of optics choices. All right. Well, Rob, so thanks. I appreciate thank you, you showing up. This Kirk. was the Olympus uh, DSX 500. And Rob Bellinger, thanks for joining us. Uh, Rob is app Applications Engineer with Olympus. Thanks, thank Rob. Thank you. Back to you, Mike.